What's a good way to hedge a potential market downturn using VIX products? Well, I was asked this week by someone who's actually a very astute longtime investor about how best to hedge their equity exposure with VIX. They're getting a little bit nervous at the um, level of the market, at some of the political backdrop, and, and the stuff that, that we've discussed here and elsewhere. Um, and my answer to him was using VIX as a hedge, at least for a retail investor, is not necessarily a good way to go, and it's probably, it's probably something that's, that, that's best avoided. Here's why. Um, VIX, uh, people forget exactly how it's constructed. It's, it's, a, thir it's an a 30 day average weighted volatility of the implied volatilities um, on S&P index options that trade on the SIBO. Um, and so you've got basically a very much of a tail wagging the dog situation now where people are trading the VIX as an index without really thinking of how that index is constructed or the components that go into it. It's sort of if you just traded spiders without really thinking about what was going on with the big cap stocks that make up the S&P 500. Um, so you've got basically, so you're starting off with derivatives on a derivative, you know, an index based on derivatives on an index and then the products based on that. So you're just layering in, in all these cases derivatives on top of derivatives. The most popular one um, is VXX. So one would say, okay, so why don't I just buy VXX? The problem with VXX, the reason it's become a popular short, um, one of the reasons it's become a popular short, is that any ETF that has to hold, hold options or roll futures is basically going to underperform its benchmark as time goes on. Why? Because there's a cost to rehedging all the time. If you have to roll futures, that, that roll is not free. If you're going to buy options, options decay. And so if you have an, if you have an ETF or an ETN that, that is basically hedged with rolling contracts, um, you're, going, you're going to underperform systemically. So you can use VXX um, as a hedge potentially, but you've got to get that timing exactly right. Otherwise, you're owning a declining asset. Then when you start to get into some of the um, derivative type of products, and those could be du double VIX, you know, like a UVXY or something like that, or options on that, then you're, laying more, you're layering more derivatives on top of contracts that already have derivatives. Uh, I've lost track of how many order derivatives we're up to now. And so each of those, each of those layers costs money. So my advice to the investor was, even though it's very tempting to use VIX as a, as a hedge, um, it, it, can also be, it can often be prohibitively expensive, especially for the products that retail would get into. The, the one that would be the cheapest, in theory, would be VIX futures, um, which some, some people who are willing uh, to go out the risk curve or have a, a high level of sophistication maybe will participate in, but realize there that the VIX futures curve is typically upward sloping. So if you're going to hedge an event out in the future, you're already paying in a premium for that one. So you may be paying um, 12, 13, 14 to hedge your, your VIX exposure out a few months um, with a VIX of 10. And so, again, you're, you're setting a very high bar for yourself when you're, when you're entering the trade. My comment would be, if you're risk averse, A, check your risk levels, and if you're over-invested, maybe be a little less over-invested if, that, if, um, if that's against your risk tolerance. If you do want to hedge, um, look more strategically at uh, put options or, or covered call strategies on, um, on the broader indices or on your larger, on your larger holdings. Um, if, you're buying, if you're buying derivatives, let's say, on SPY, the spreads are very tight, and at least it's, a, it's one derivative um, instead of multiple layers.